on World News Tonight. Putin speaks out. Russian President Vladimir Putin delivers his annual State of the Nation speech to the joint houses of the Russian parliament. Strengthening ties. China's foreign minister met with his Singaporean counterpart in order to boost ties. Struck again. The Turkey-Syrian border is hit with another deadly earthquake just weeks after the previous one. And a Jedi's weapon. The force is strong with the French as the world's first lightsaber championship blasts off in Paris. This is Adaderna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. A very good evening and you are joining us on World News this Tuesday and we begin tonight from China. As Chinese Foreign Minister Ching Gang met with his Singaporean counterpart Vivian Balakrishnan in Beijing in efforts to strengthen bilateral ties. Chin said that China attaches great importance to bilateral ties with Singapore and the unique role Singapore plays in regional and international affairs. China stands ready to work with Singapore to implement the important consensus reached by the two heads of state and to achieve new developments in bilateral relations. Noting there are important opportunities for the integration and mutual promotion of modernization of the two countries, Chin said the two sides should seek greater synergies between each other's development strategies, advance the joint construction of a high-quality belt and road, and promote the upgrading of cooperation. For his part, Balakrishnan said that since the outbreak of COVID-19, the two sides have helped each other and stuck together through thick and thin. The mutual trust between Singapore and China has been enhanced, he said, while the practical cooperation has also progressed smoothly. Noting that the interests of the two sides are highly integrated, Balakrishnan said Singapore is full of expectations for cooperation with China in various fields, adding that Singapore will continue to uphold multilateralism and safeguard peace and prosperity together with China. The two sides indicated that they will prepare for the next stage of high-level exchanges, agreed to accelerate the full resumption of direct flights, and stressed adherence to an open and inclusive regional cooperation architecture with the Association of Southeast Asian Nations at the centre. India and Singapore launched a real-time link to facilitate easier cross-border money transfers between one of the world's biggest recipients of remittances and an Asian financial powerhouse today. Transfers of funds will now be possible using just mobile phones due to the tie-up between India's Unified Payments Interface, UPI, and Singapore's PayNow facility. Such cross-border transfer arrangements typically lower costs of payments. At the launch event, Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong said that cross-border retail payments and remittances between India and Singapore currently amount to over $1 billion annually. UPI is an instant real-time payment system allowing users to transfer money across multiple banks without disclosing bank account details. Similarly, PayNow is a service offered by participating banks that allows sending and receiving Singapore dollar funds from one bank to another using a mobile number. To begin with, State Bank of India, Indian Overseas Bank, Indian Bank and ICICI Bank will facilitate both inward and outward remittances, while Axis Bank and DBS India will facilitate inward remittances. For Singapore users, the service will be made available through DBS Singapore and Liquid Group, a non-bank financial institution. Just two weeks after the devastating earthquakes, another powerful quake slammed the Turkey and Syria border. At least eight people have been killed and hundreds injured already. Another big earthquake with a magnitude of 6.3 struck southeastern Turkey and northwestern Syria Monday, the same regions that were devastated by a deadly earthquake two weeks ago. At least eight deaths have been reported, three in Turkey and five in Syria, while hundreds of others have been injured. Turkish Vice President Fuad Oktay said the latest quake is not an aftershock from the February 6th earthquake, but rather a new, massive one, and added nearly 30 aftershocks have been detected so far. Monday's earthquake was centered in Turkey's Hatay province, where a rescue operation is underway. For many of those that are still coping with the aftermath of the initial earthquakes for two weeks, even the slightest tremor has them leaving their homes. Same fear, the same feeling of unease. We cannot enter. If we do, we cannot stay. We don't know. We don't know what to do. God have mercy on us. There is nothing to say. In Syria, the earthquake has resulted in power outages and disrupted telephone and internet services in the affected regions of the two countries. A number of buildings collapsed as well. The earthquake was felt as far away as Egypt and Lebanon. 
Meanwhile, with operations focused more on the survivors, authorities say more than a million people have been left homeless since the February 6th earthquakes. The death toll from those quakes has also surpassed 47,000 people. Experts also say the aftershocks could last from month to years. Philippine authorities launched a search mission atop a restive volcano after spotting the suspected wreckage of a missing plane carrying two Australians along with a Filipino pilot and crew member. The six-seater Cessna 340 aircraft was bound for the capital Manila when it lost contact with air traffic control on Saturday after it left Bicol International Airport in Albay province, said the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. The two Australians, Simon Shipperfield and and Karthi Santanam were technical consultants working for Energy Development Corp, a Manila-based geothermal firm. In the statement, the company said its emergency response team had located wreckage at an altitude of about 6,000 feet. More than 200 personnel along with 34 vehicles, 11 drones and 4 K-9 dogs were deployed in the joint search and rescue operation to research the aircraft in remote volcano. We're going into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back. Now, Russian President Vladimir Putin delivered his State of the Nation address to the Russian parliament earlier today following Joe Biden's surprise visit to Kyiv. Putin has started by setting out why Russia started what he terms is a special military operation accusing the West and NATO of publicly talking about supplying nuclear weapons to Ukraine in advance of Russia's invasion. Vladimir Putin accused the West of playing a dirty game with people and with Ukraine. He cited Yugoslavia, Iraq and Syria and centuries of colonialism and dictatorship. He said the West deceived their own people with total unprincipled lies about what was happening in Donbas. The Russian president said they were open to dialogue with the West and were open to an equal system of security, but in response we were getting dishonest answers and specific actions to expand NATO and deploy new anti-missile systems in Europe. He says the whole planet is dotted with U.S. bases. Putin accused the West of an endless flow of accusations against Russia at the recent Munich Security Conference and said the West released the genie from the bottle as a result of wars and accused the West of perpetrating multiple coups. The president noted that Western countries had admitted that the 2014-2015 Minsk agreements that were meant to pave the way for peace in Ukraine by granting the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republic's special status were nothing more than a diplomatic spectacle, a bluff. Putin claimed that the Ukrainian people had become hostages of their Western masters who occupied the country in political, economic and military terms. He said the regime is not serving their national interest, they are serving the interests of foreign powers. He also stated that the West is trying to turn a local conflict into a global conflict and quote, we will react in an appropriate way, we are talking about the existence of our country. He accused the West of theft of Russia's currency reserves and says the Russian economy has overcome all these risks. Putin said the West has begun not just a military and information, but an economic aggression against Russia. Putin finally thanked those in the Russian armed forces who have been fighting in Ukraine. He said that there are too many people and units involved to name them all, and he did not want to risk omitting someone. He praises mothers, wives, doctors, nurses, railway workers, engineers, agricultural workers for their role in helping the war effort. The death toll from devastating rainfall in southeastern Brazil rose to 40 as President Lula da Silva visited the region and said homes should no longer be built on areas at risk of landslides and major floods. As the death toll climbs in Brazil after devastating rainfall, Brazil's leader visited flood-hit areas in the country's southeast on Monday, where many are still missing. President Lula da Silva flew over the coastal town of São Sebastião, where most of the deaths have been reported. He pledged to help rebuild the town of some 91,000 people and said homes in Brazil should no longer be constructed in areas at risk of landslides and major floods. He also promised the government would restore key infrastructure, like roads ravaged by landslides. More than 2,000 people in Sao Paulo state have been forced from their homes after rains pounded the coast and left behind more than 23 inches of water. Many others remained stranded with roads cut off. Helicopters rescued some from homes now unlivable, 
taking them to a military base in São Sebastião. They also brought the bodies of those who had died. This woman says she's lucky to be alive after an avalanche reached one of the walls of her home. The floods were the latest in a series of disasters that recently struck Brazil, where shoddy construction, often on hillsides, regularly leads to tragic consequences during the rainy season. This disaster also struck during Brazil's carnival holiday period, when thousands flocked to the region's beaches, likely worsening its human toll. According to scientists and environmental groups, weeks of dry winter weather have raised concerns that Italy could face another drought after last summer's emergency with the Alps having received less than half of their normal snowfall. The warning comes as Venice, where flooding is normally the primary concern, faces unusual low tides that are making it impossible for gondolas, water taxis and ambulances to navigate some of its famous canals. The problems in Venice are being blamed on the combination of factors, the lack of rain, a high-pressure system, a full moon and sea currents. Italian rivers and lakes are suffering from severe lack of water. The Po, Italy's longest river, which runs from the Alps in the northwest of the Adriatic, has 61% less water than normal at this time of the year. Last July, Italy declared a state of emergency for areas surrounding the Po, which accounts for roughly of the third of the country's agricultural production and suffered its worst drought in 70 years. Water levels on Lake Garda in northern Italy have fallen to record lows, making it possible to reach the small island of San Biagio on the lake via on an exports pathway. An anticyclone has been dominating the weather in Western Europe for 15 days, bringing mild temperatures more normally seen in late spring. Latest weather forecasts do, however, signal the arrival of much-needed precipitation and snow of the Alps in the coming days. Intense tropical cyclone Freddy passed about 140 kilometers northwest of Mauritius, bringing strong winds and dangerous sea conditions. And Madagascar is on the lookout for dangerous cyclones as well. Mauritius grounded flights and shut its stock exchange on Monday as tropical cyclone Freddy approached the island. The storm, packing winds of up to 75 miles per hour, poses a direct threat to Mauritius, the island nation's weather service has said. It warned that a storm surge is likely to cause coastal inundation in risk areas. The video showed strong winds and waves hitting an oceanfront hotel. Water could be seen entering the lobby as guests and staff looked on. Authorities on the island of Madagascar, around 700 miles west of Mauritius, said they were expecting a direct hit by late Tuesday. Emergency teams there are braced for heavy rains, floods and landslides in four regions. In recent years, the Indian Ocean's islands and Mozambique on Africa's coast have been hit by a string of deadly storms. Homes have been destroyed, crops ruined and thousands forced to flee. Nine military trade companies are participating in the ongoing Abu Dhabi International Defence Exhibition and conference to showcase the technological capabilities of China's defence industry. The China's exhibitors convert on area of more than 2,100 square metres, with the scale and the number of exhibits being the largest in history. Nearly 500 pieces of equipment are displayed covering traditional security fields such as aerial, maritime and land warfare, as well as emerging equipment fields such as network intelligence and unmanned weapons. In particular, dozens of products including the LY-80B air defense system are exhibited overseas for the first time. In addition, multifunctional unmanned boats, unmanned ground platforms, integrated anti-drone systems and advanced equipment like FD-2000 air defense system, VT-4 main battle tanks and AR-3 multiple launch rocket systems are all in display. Some products independently, developed by Chinese weapon manufacturers, made their overseas public debut at the exhibition. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A statement passed by the United Nations Security Council during an open meeting said that all countries must fulfill their international obligations and commitments to realize the two-state solution of the Palestinian-Israeli issue. 
The German Institute of Economic Research stated that Germany suffered an economic loss of 100 billion euros last year due to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Energy prices in Germany in 2002 rose 34.7% from the previous year, with the prices for natural gas soaring to 64.8%. Leading Bollywood stars, including Alia Bhatt, Rekha, Vidya Balan, and Anupam Kher, attended the glittering red carpet of India's prestigious Dada Saheb Phalke Awards in Mumbai. The Kashmir Files won the Best Film Award and its lead actor Anupam Kher was given the Most Versatile Actor Award. Modern metal and debris rained down on the Ohio neighborhood after an explosion tore through a metals plant about 15 miles southeast of Cleveland. At least one person was killed and about a dozen others injured, mostly with burns. Former Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan was granted protective bail by a court in the eastern city of Lahore, providing him respite from arrest for two weeks in a case that involves charges under the country's anti-terrorism laws. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news as we join you with more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we leave you tonight with athletes in Mets channeling their inner Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader with judges and watching them as France posted its first lightsaber championship. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good night.